If value can talk, much like Susan Sontag, it might say, I haven't been everywhere, but it's on my list. Now, what do I mean by that? As pricers, we're all familiar with the idea of value pricing, but very few of us, I would argue, have implemented value selling at our organizations. My name is Gabriel Smith. I'm the Chief Evangelist and heading our Solution Strategy Group at PriceFX. I have over 23 years of experience in pricing, quote to cash, and CPQ. So today I want to talk about some of the differences between value pricing and value selling, and specifically how you can prepare your commercial organization to sell on value and realize better outcomes. The management guru Peter Drucker once said, because the purpose of a business is to create a customer, that there are only really two functions that matter, marketing and innovation. Innovation creates value. Marketing quantifies, communicates, and prices based on that value. In a B2B environment, sales convinces and captures value. So I don't want to contest what Peter Drucker says, but I would add to it to say that in a B2B environment, sales is also the third leg of that stool, and it's equally as important as marketing and innovation. When you think about how this works at a B2B organization, a good way to think about it is a pyramid or a triangle with product creating value, marketing, quantifying, communicating, and pricing that value, and I'm including pricing and marketing for these purposes, and then sales around convincing and capturing that value. Now, for those organizations to work together, having a frame framework that helps them collaborate on a go-to-market strategy is very empowering. So we just looked at the go-to-market framework, but let's think about the process. I'm calling this the virtuous value cycle. So the steps of the virtuous value cycle are one, to comprehend value, two, to price based on that value, three, to create the value with innovation, four, to communicate that value to the market through marketing and advertising, five, to capture that value, and six, to measure that value. So what are the sources of truth for value pricing? There's three basic sources of truth for value pricing. The first is market research. So this can be either internal um, market research that you conduct, studies that you conduct, or external research that you're doing. That's an area where a lot of companies spend a lot of time and effort. The second is data, both internal and external, to help inform better decisions. And the third is structured conversations with customers. Now, ironically, while this is probably the area where companies spend the least time and effort, it's also the most specific and actionable out of any of these areas in terms of pricing and value realization. Clayton Christensen was famous for the innovator's dilemma, but one of the other theories that he had uh, and frameworks that he used was this idea of jobs to be done. So let's think about that for a minute. The basic concept is that your customer is hiring your product or service to do a job for them. And there might be other alternatives to that. So one way to think about value pricing and value selling is by understanding what that job is that the customer is hiring you to do, and then what the value of that job is to them. The four different areas for value drivers when you think about jobs to be done are financial, operational, psychological, and risk reduction. So here we have a series of questions that just give you a sense of when you have these structured conversations with customers and your commercial team engages them, some kind of food for thought around the types of questions that you might want to ask. For example, how could we help you be more successful? What is your alternative to our product or service? What is our competition doing better than us? What do you wish we could do more of for you? So these are just a few examples, but the idea is that you train your commercial organization to have these conversations with customers and that you have them outside of the context of a negotiation. By doing this, you get a better understanding, you tighten the partnership, and then you have also some information that you can leverage in the negotiation process. One thing that you'll learn when you have these conversations is that there's a lot more than just price that these companies consider. Payment terms, rebates, on-time delivery. So there's a lot more than just price that influences these negotiations and are important to your customers, especially the large ones. The other consideration here is when you're dealing with large clients, you're gonna be dealing with large, sophisticated procurement organizations. Those procurement organizations have playbooks and a series of strategies and tactics that they're going to use to try to get better pricing, better terms, et cetera. Really, what it comes down to is they're trying to do three things. Drive misalignment in your organization, so create confusion by communicating with different people, trying to escalate things to your executives, 
give you a sense of helplessness and to create this sense of urgency. And at the end of the day, to undermine the confidence of the salespeople to hold firm on price. By using these techniques, procurement organizations are looking to compress your margins and oftentimes will do so by 300 to 500 basis points. So what can you do about this at your organization? Well, through the right people, process, and systems, you can train your commercial organization and create this collaborative go-to-market framework that enables more alignment across the organization, improves the perceived negotiating power, and improves the confidence of the salespeople to go get that price in other terms and conditions that can improve your margin by 300 to 500 basis points. So where does that 300 to 500 basis points of margin improvement come from? It comes from five different areas. One, eliminate or reduce price leakage. So by understanding these value drivers and having these contextual conversations before the negotiation starts, you can leverage that information to reduce price leakage and therefore reduce margin leakage. Two, de-risk volume loss. By understanding these value drivers, you can reduce the risk of threatened loss of volume and use them also to get the share that you want and deserve. Three, optimize the mix. So you can optimize your mix of products as well as collaborate with customers on co-innovation and co-creation and deliver on the promise of innovation through collaboration. Four, cash conversion. Minimize procurement efforts to extend payment terms. Maximize cash conversion through achievement of equitable order lead time and finished goods inventory arrangements. Minimize risk of dead stock and return goods write downs by achieving fair and equitable fulfillment conditions and terms. Five, executive foresight. Prevent and eliminate white horse syndrome. In other words, intentional efforts by the procurement organization to engage your executives to increase their discounts. Position the executive suite to be able to control and direct the negotiation from the periphery. So by using these techniques, you can drive 300 to 500 basis points of margin improvement for your largest customers. A lot of our clients see the majority of their revenue and profit come from their largest customers. So these techniques can be incredibly powerful for improving both revenue and margin. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information about value pricing and value selling, please check out our learning center and the links in the description below. Thanks and happy pricing.